Hi, welcome to Dit Dot. My name's Amanda. And today I'm actually gonna dive a little bit deeper into a fermented drink known as kombucha. One of the most highly searched phrases on my YouTube channel lately has been how to make kombucha. And I have a one minute short that goes through the process of brewing kombucha in one minute, but I would like to dive deeper for any of the people who've never heard of kombucha, or if you're like me and you need a whole lot more information than what one minute can provide. So well, I'm gonna start off with, this is some of my raspberry kombucha from my last brew. And as you can tell, I'm getting kind of low and it's time for me to switch my SCOBY over to a new batch. So we're gonna do that today. So what is kombucha? Kombucha is a naturally probiotic, everescent, which means naturally bubble, we drink. Mm. This one's really strong because it's been in the refrigerator for a while, but um, that's another thing. If you're new to kombucha, it sometimes can be known to have a vinegary taste, but you quickly get used to it. And a lot of people really get to where they crave that tangy vinegary. Oh my gosh, it's so good. So I started drinking kombucha years ago when I gave up all soda. I stopped drinking Cokes and Dr. Peppers and all of that. And so whenever I want a bubbly drink, kombucha is my thing. So again, what is kombucha? It's an ancient drink. It has been cultivated in Asia and Europe for thousands of years. It has only been recently started to be mainstreamed into America. So you may have heard of it or may not because it's still something that a lot of people haven't quite discovered. So like I said, it is naturally bubbly and it contains probiotics and beneficial bacteria. Okay, so I just went and pulled. This is my batch of kombucha that has been fermenting, but because of the holidays and life getting busy, I have stuck this in the back of the refrigerator, which is kind of convenient. You can do that to kombucha. So it is something that you can do a continuous brew. So like every week or two, you're switching over to a new batch, or if you need to take a break, you can put it in the refrigerator and it'll just chill for you, unlike your toddler. All right, so again, what is kombucha? It's basically fermented sweet tea. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is start with very clean hands. This is because the SCOBY is a living organism. It's a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. And I just realized I'm not wearing my microphone and my daughter is sitting right there crunching potato chips. So if you hear a crunching noise, it's just my daughter crunching potato chips. So I'm gonna pull out the SCOBY so you can see what it looks like. And it kind of is a rubbery looking thing. This side's all nice and pretty, but sometimes they can get quite gnarly looking. Is that a word? I don't know. My teen's shaking her head saying no, or she's shaking her head at this, like I said. They can get quite yuck looking, but that is perfectly fine. I usually will just take this yuck and toss it. Okay, so this one, like I said, has been fermenting for quite a while and then it's been in the refrigerator. One thing when you have it on your counter and you're trying to see if you are ready to turn it over to the next batch is I'll get like a clean little vessel and taste test it. Oh, that one's good. This this batch is better than this batch. So, that, um, just doing a taste test. And once you taste test it and you're like, if it still tastes like sweet tea, keep fermenting it. If it's starting to get bubbly onto a pleasant flavor, then you're ready to switch over to the next batch, which is what we're gonna do now. So the first thing that we do is simply make a batch of sweet tea. So, fill up your tea kettle. I'll edit out some of this. Yeah, I know. No one wants to watch this. Right. And set it to boil. While our water is boiling, we're going to go ahead and prep up our clean jar to make our next batch. So I like to ferment in just a plain gallon sized jar. Some people like to ferment their, oh, I'm echoing. Uh, some people like to ferment their kombucha in 
a jar that has a tap down at the bottom and it's part of the continuous ferment. I do a kind of continuous ferment brew, but I just go ahead and go from bottle to bottle. The problem with having the tap is preventing a SCOBY to grow across the inside of it. I used to have one of those and like I would try things like from pantyhose to other pieces of linen with like clean uh, with a uh, twine, clean twine wrapped around it and stuff. And it ended up being more hassle. I could never find a solution. So good luck if you can find one better than me. Anyway, so again, clean one gallon jar. And then we're going to use one cup of sugar. Now, kombucha is a simple little organism. It likes plain white sugar. I know you and I want to be healthy and use honey and maple syrup. But kombucha just wants cane sugar. I'm sure the ancient people probably fermented more with honey, but nowadays they do recommend using sugar for your, to just have a consistent healthy homebrew. So usually you want one cup of sugar for a gallon. You saw I put a little extra in there because I'm one of those people who tend to like ignore my kombucha for a little bit longer and will go a couple extra days and then that just gives it a little extra sugar to live on because like I said, it's a living organism and sugar is its food. The teas that I'm gonna use, if you can buy organic black tea, that is always the best. This is just Lipton iced black tea. And I like to tie my bags together so that way I can fish them out easier at the end. But again, I'm not using organic. It is better for your kombucha if you do use organic. So this is black tea and let's talk about flavoring now. So you can do just a black tea and flavor at the end, which I'll talk about later, or you can flavor while you're brewing. So I'm doing black tea and then this is raspberry tea. It needs black tea as part of its food though. Now there are people who brew green teas and other things. I've never explored that. So I don't know if that's something that they have to eventually like do a brew with the black tea in there or if they can have a kombucha thrive on green tea everything that i've learned is brew with black tea <laughs> we're gonna put our teas in there waiting for my water to boil and i'll be back okay so while i'm waiting for my water to boil let's go ahead and talk about how you store your kombucha once you're done fermenting how are you going to then store it while you're waiting to drink it because you're not going to be drinking one gallon in a sitting, right? So as you saw, I had this jar. So a lot of times I just go from gallon to gallon or sometimes I needed my gallon jar to start my next brew because I didn't quite finish this one. So I moved it to this container. I'm finishing up this batch and while I create that one. So what I typically do just because I want to keep it easy and the laziest method possible is I will just put my new kombucha in the refrigerator in the gallon jar and just pour and serve from that. But it does get more bubbly if you put it in smaller jars. So a lot of times I will save the store-bought kombucha jars that, um, <laughs> cause even though I homebrew, sometimes when you're out and about, you just, and they have some really different flavors that it's harder to sometimes create at home. This one, raspberry lemon ginger, I have been trying to make, but I don't get quite the same as this uh, Simply, Simply Truth Organic brand. But anyway, um, so I've got like about eight of these jars that I keep, and then sometimes I will do a second ferment and I will store them in this. It's really convenient. You can grab it from your refrigerator and have it out the door. If you want to create really good bubbly kombucha, if you buy a couple of these swing caps, and I will link some of these from Amazon down below. I appreciate it when you use my Amazon links. I get a couple cents thrown my way anytime you use any of the Amazon links that I click down below. So this is a, what they call a swing top bottle. And what it does is it actually does lock down. And so for the second ferment, you will get a build up of the carbon dioxide, which will create a, a much more bubbly end product. So I have, I think about six of these, but you have to use a funnel to fill them up. So again, I don't do this very often. I do sacrifice a few bubbles for convenience. But we'll talk more about second ferments in a little bit. Mm. Looks like my water 
It's starting to come up to a boil. I just needed to get hot enough to melt the sugar, but since then we have to make sure it comes completely down to room temperature. I don't necessarily always let it get up to a full boil. So let's see, let's check it out. Pour that in and then we just wanna give it a stir. I like to just use my clean wooden spoon here and I wanna make sure that all the sugar dissolves completely and then we're going to add enough water to get up pretty high, but not all the way up. So let me go ahead and fill this up with some more water. Once the sugar's dissolved, you can do that. Okay, so this is my last batch that we're going to turn into the kombucha we're going to drink. This is the batch that we are currently making. So I need to give it time to brew the sweet tea because that's all it is right now is sweet tea and give it time to cool down all the way to room temperature. So that's what we're going to do now. And we'll be back when this is all the way cooled down. Okay, so it's been a couple of hours. My tea here that I just freshly brewed is now room temperature. You don't want it to be hot, that will hurt your SCOBY. And this is the one that has been in the refrigerator for a long time. So now would be a good time to talk a little bit about the materials you wanna use. So you can see I'm using glass. You do not want to ferment your kombucha in plastic or metal. You wanna stick with glass and then you want to have a tightly woven linen or this one's cotton, but I folded it over several times that while it's fermenting, you cover this and you let it breathe. You want to keep it covered. And then I usually, I've got like a extra large rubber band here that I put across the top because uh, if you live in an area that is prone to fruit flies and things like that, they are very attracted to the smell of this kombucha. So you don't want them to get into your kombucha. That will be one of the things that were in it. So kombucha is super, super, super easy. It's very non-fussy to homebrew, but yeah, you definitely want to make sure that the bugs don't get in. So I have clean hands. This is my fermented kombucha. This is the one that we'll be drinking. This is the new batch. It's now been brewed as sweet tea. So like if you live in the South, this is where you would just drink this over ice and call yourself uh, with sweet tea. Yes, us Americans, we like to drink cold iced tea. Apparently that is uh, taboo in England. So I'm going to reach my hand in here, my very, very clean hands, pull out these tea bags and discard them. Now, where do you get a SCOBY? That's a good question. So I'm going to link down below. I love, I'm non-sponsored, but I really love the, the company Cultures for Health. They sell a lot of different fermentation products. They will ship you a SCOBY. I will also link some Amazon links. I have ordered from Cultures of Health before. If you live in a large city, oh look, you can also see the change of color. Okay, I just interrupted myself, but Okay, that's how it is on Diet Dot, right? I, I've got a little touch of like, oh, look, a chicken. Anyway, when your kombucha is first, I mean, when your tea is first brewed, it's gonna be dark like this. And then as it ferments, it lightens up. I don't know why, but that does happen. Anyway, back to where you get your sco SCOBY. If you live in a larger city, it's very likely that somebody in your community has a SCOBY already. And the SCOBY can be peeled apart. You only need a chunk of it. And every week it will grow like a little baby. And so this time I'm gonna go ahead and just put this whole SCOBY over to the next um, tea because I divided mine fairly recently and gave it to somebody else in my community so that they could start. But you can see there are layers 
and you don't really need that much. As a matter of fact, if your SCOBY gets too big, it's going to eat through the sugar too fast. So you don't want it to get too big. So every once in a while you divide it, you can add it to your compost pile. I will give a little piece of it to my dog. It's kind of like a vitamin for them. Um, and then obviously if you've got a friend who wants to start growing kombucha for themselves, you can peel off some of your SCOBY and give it to them along with a cup of your kombucha that you've brewed. So you can measure out in a measuring cup at least one cup for a gallon or you can just kind of estimate i'm just going to estimate um and i kind of maybe go a little on the over just for this you know safe again it's a living organism and so it eats food and it has to have the correct environment so the correct environment has a certain alkalinity so we want to help this new batch out by adding some of the old kombucha so now this is the one we're going to be fermenting. So now I'm gonna take my linen cloth and I'm going to add it to my new one. This is gonna sit on your counter or in a cupboard for about seven to 10 days. If you like it more fermented, it can you know almost go up to two weeks. Just kind of like after about seven, eight days, kind of look at it if it's starting to get lighter like this and give it a taste and it's all on your own kind of like preferences. I mean, cause it's sweet tea. You could drink it as is right now. It's just not full of the probiotics and stuff until it had time to ferment. So I'm going to put this guy behind me and I either usually, sometimes you'll see him in my videos. Sometimes he, he <laughs> I've, I've, I've personalized him. Um, he lives back there and then otherwise I've got a cabinet over here that I will keep him in. Okay, so this one is ready to go. Or if you want it extra bubbly, what we do is called a second ferment. And I usually opt to do this. So what I do, there's no SCOBY in here, but there's still tons of probiotics and you know the, the bacteria and everything is still in there. So for a gallon, I take maybe a couple tablespoons. It's not even a full fourth of a cup and add it to there. I'm now going to leave this on the counter for a second ferment for a day. Now, if you wanted to bottle it, before I added the sugar, well, you could add the sugar because remember this one's flavored with raspberry tea, this batch was also. So I could transfer it to these bottles. I could add the sugar, transfer it to the bottles, screw the lid on really tight because that's where you're gonna help get your bubbles. And then you would have kombuchas in these type of containers. If you just had black tea and you hadn't flavored it, that's just plain kombucha. You can drink it like that too. Some people enjoy plain kombucha. Otherwise, what my favorite flavor used to be um, when I first started brewing kombucha, I would just do straight up black tea and then I would put like a half an inch of grape juice down in the bottom of these jars and then I would add my kombucha to the top for my second ferment and I would leave these out on the counter overnight and then the next morning I'd put them in the refrigerator. You do need to store them in the refrigerator after the second ferment or they will keep fermenting and you can have lids explode. If kombucha is left out sealed tightly, it will, the carbonation will build up so much that you can get an explosion. So leave it out overnight, then put them, store them in the refrigerator. Before we wrap up this video, I wanted to go over just a couple more points. One is caffeine. There's a lot of people who have concerns about caffeine. Yes, it's made with black tea. So there is some caffeine. They haven't studied this too much, but in the research that I have read, they some tests have said that the longer it ferments, the less caffeine is left, like perhaps the um, bacteria and stuff is breaking down on the caffeine. Second concern is alcohol. This is a fermented product, and fermented products do give off alcohols. It's part of the fermentation process. Kombucha is such a very, very small ferment. I mean, if, if you were to leave it out for like a month, you might end up with an alcoholic beverage <laughs> or, you know, slightly alcoholic. It still wouldn't be that much. Kombucha is such a small, and they've done tests on this, especially once people were starting to commercially bottle it, that it isn't labeled a non, it has so little alcohol. It is labeled a non-alcoholic beverage and you can give it to children. It's safe to consume. If you are somebody who avoids all alcohol or you have an alcohol allergy, please consult somebody who knows 
a lot more than I do about whether or not kombucha or any fermented product is safe for you to consume. Um, sugar. So we put in a cup at least of sugar into this uh, tea. And if you're somebody who avoids sugar and you're like, I don't want this. Well, again, the SCOBY, the symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast, that is the food they eat. So they are eating on the sugar and they're breaking it down. They are converting it into the gases and the probiotics. I'm not the science person to look into this, but basically the sugar gets broken down and the longer it ferments, the less sweet and the less sugar is left behind. So if you go for a seven day ferment, there will be more sugar than if you go for like a 14 day ferment. So it's really hard to test exactly how many sugars there are left. If you're somebody who is avoiding all sugar, this may not be the drink for you. But I feel that the health benefits far outweigh the amount of sugar that is left in this drink. So I got a lot of my information today. I'm not sponsored, like I said, but I got a lot of my information today from the Cultures of Health website. It's a really good resource. Like I said, I will link it down below. There's a lot of information on the web. I trust them. I have been brewing kombucha off and on for 12-ish years, I think. I don't consider myself an expert. I just follow this. I haven't experimented very much. I haven't deviated from this, this method, but uh, there's a lot of fun that you can have with this. If you have brewed kombucha before, or if you've even just drank it, but you never knew that you could home brew it, make sure you comment below. I would love to have a discussion about what your favorite flavors are, what your favorite method, if you've done the green tea method, because I've heard about it, but I haven't really looked into it. Um, I just would love to hear from you. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure that you check out some of my other videos. I have so much fun cooking homemade healthy meals and I will talk to you next time.